Yo, I'm Will Blackman, and this is Upsets and Underdogs presented by WinBet. Week 16 was a fun one indeed. The Titans beat the Niners on Thursday night. Nick Foles and the Bears beat the Seahawks in a snow game in Seattle. And the Texans, they surprised everyone by taking it to the Chargers in a shootout win. We'll break down those games and discuss what we can learn from them. Plus, we'll talk some basketball with Sixers forward George Niang. So stick around. This show is brought to you by WinBet. Week 16 is over, but there's still plenty of time to get in on the action. So right now, download the WinBet app and start winning today. New users can take advantage of WinBet's bet $1, win $100 offer. If you bet just $1, you can win a free $100 bet on almost any sport, NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, college football, UFC, boxing, and more. Bowl season's here, so get in on that college football. And they're also offering a 2% wager matchup up to $1,500. So for all details on these offers, download the WinBet app now and set the odds in your favor. Offer so that to change term and condition at WinBet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And like we like to start off, welcome back to the show. And welcome back, my dog, Lamb. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. All that good stuff. <laughs> What's good, Will? It feels it feels weird when uh, I only see you once a week, man. So into this rhythm of Dude, don't, don't even, don't, I, I knew you were such a, a, a softy love pup, man. Like, it's fine. <laughs> okay? It's fine. It's one, one day a week is fine. You'll be all right, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll be able right. to get through it. I'll be able to get through it. Uh, if I sound a little raspy, I am sick. Though I don't want to know all this. Tested negative. I don't want to you know, know all this stuff. That's my th- okay. Okay. Here's my <laughs> thing. Actually, I learned this from my wife. She was like, "Look, if you're if you're anytime you're doing something, don't ever announce how you mm. feel. <laughs> don't, just just chill. Especially like if you're at home, just chill. It's all good. Well, I hope you feel better. Thanks, man. Were you out partying? Like all the all your college friends came home and <laughs> Nah, I was uh I was back home with the fam, you know, regular Christmas stuff. You get anything cool? Uh nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> you you got nothing cool. That's that's messed up. Actually, I got some cool stuff. My um my wife got me this cool uh like the streaming deck where you can change scenes, like press the oh, button. Yeah. Like that was pretty gnarly, and I got a um, I got a nice. She gave me like some cool stuff. I got a bunch of like gaming, like Twitch stuff. So okay. like you can't see it, but I have a my, my I have a, this, the mouse pad that's lit up with the neon lights. The mouse pad is as long as my desk, so I can like really, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now my son is into gaming, so I got the we got the new Aliens game. So he plays upstairs. I play right here. It's pretty cool, actually. Speaking of. Our son today is his 11th birthday, so that is oh. pretty rad and and scary because he's he's I think he's like five three. I don't like it. <laughs> and like and it. he's into the jujitsu too, so you better be no. Careful, he's man. into basketball right now. He's like oh. hardcore basketball. He asked for a LeBron jersey and a Toontown's LeBron jersey for Christmas mm. and his birthday, and he, he got both, of course. Um, and also too, we got him a a one wheel. Which is what might be the most dangerous vehicle <laughs> known to mankind. That thing is I'm pretty athletic and balanced. Like I have a hoverboard, I'm good on it. I'm good on bikes, I'm good on I'm good on a skateboard, I'm good on rollerblades, I can ice skate, I can do all these things. But I jumped in that one wheel and all <laughs> superpowers were gone. Like it's it's absolutely terrifying. All right, I'm excited to welcome to the show Philadelphia 76's power forward and fellow New Englander. George Niang, what's the deal, man? How you doing? What's happening? How are you feeling? You good? I'm good. I'm good. I, you know, I uh, I beat the itis, but the itis that we call COVID. Uh, so uh, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, we uh, actually just started a road trip. We were in Washington, D.C. last night, um, and now we're up in Toronto. So it, it's good to be back. I mean, whenever you can get out of isolation and continue to do what you love, you, you got to be thankful, especially with everything that's going on. I feel like it's free agency with how much these guys are tweeting out. People are in COVID protocols. Right. There's all these, I see a ton of 10 day contracts being handed out just so guys can play Man. games, which is nuts. 
Yeah, no, one hundred percent. So you're wild. in Canada. Ironically, I'm repping the Saskatchewan. Um, sure. What, what people don't know is I actually I played one game for the Saskatchewan <laughs> Rough Riders in the CFL. So yes, I'm repping. Um, you said you rep a team. Who are you repping up there in the CFL? I'm a, uh, I went to a high school with a, a kid that's from Montreal. So I'm a Montreal Alouettes, Alouettes guy. That's what's up. So, by the way, I have I have a, a small a small issue, New England basketball issue. So I'm from Providence, right? I'm from Providence. P and rep I went to P. Rep to P. And I went to BC. Okay. We keep whiffing on all you dudes. You did BC even offer you? Yeah, yeah, that one hurt because I went to BC. Whiffed yeah. on him and whiffed on MCW. Like what? Why? How come no New England basketball players are going to BC? Like, like what do we need to do? Um, here's the thing: is like I, I think the thing that you got to come in, at it with like a package deal, right? Uh, you know, where you try to get them all at once. The thing with me is, so I went to high school with Nerlens Noel, Wayne Selden, right? Um, a bunch of guys that played Division One, and they were like recruiting guys from different teams like i think if you want a group to stay home you got to get them bought in as a a whole right because in boston like all of us want to be appreciated but we wouldn't be appreciated if we just individualized like individually went there we'd have to go there right. as a collective group where there could be like hey these kids grew up together they stuck together like it has to be a story behind it where it's like Wayne went to Kansas. New Orleans went to Kentucky. Like, you're just another person that's fitting into a culture that just loves basketball. Where, like, BC basketball, like, nobody's, like, in Boston is, like, go Eagles no. basketball. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, it's the Celtics, the Patriots. Like, you got to create a narrative, create a story. And I think if you don't have a coach from Boston that would understand that, I, I don't, like, you got to bring a coach that would understand that and realize that you need to bring that camaraderie that that group aspect of it to paint a narrative and hopefully you can win some games with i mean a bunch we're all top 100 recruits i mean so right right to have somebody who understands you know amateur basketball within boston so this show is called upsets and underdogs and i ask every single guest what is the one point in your career where you felt most like an underdog and you overcame it um, you know, my, the trajectory of my career is kind of like done this, like what success is for, for everybody. So I would definitely have to say, uh, uh, getting cut by the Indiana Pacers was like the moment where I was like, dang, like, did I just blow this opportunity that, you know, I had, or, you know, or can I wake up every day and put everything that I have into this dream and continue to push forward? And, uh, it's crazy to say, but the best year of my career was, going to the G League and having to have a routine, having to, you know what I mean, mend with the fact that I wasn't in the NBA, but I had to watch games where other guys were ahead of me. So I would definitely say the start of my second year where in the in the G League, I played for the Santa Cruz Warriors after I was cut by the Indiana Pacers, where, you know, I was in training camp with the Warriors at that time. So the, the deal is you sign a training camp deal, you do training camp with them, and then they cut you so that they can have you right. for their G League team. So like the the underdog moment for me was obviously getting cut, but then the growth part for me was getting to watch Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, who like diligently work. Like the clock hit 9 o'clock and all three of them are on the court like going through workouts pre-practice like they were on like 10-day contracts. Right. So in my head, I'm like, wait a second, like, these make like $30 million a year. Like, I'm getting 50 grand to come to training camp. Like, if I don't start working like them on a day to day basis, like, <laughs> right. I don't stand, I don't stand a chance. So that kind of made me realize, like, you got to have a routine, whether if you're sick, injured, not feeling well, that you're getting yourself 1% better every single day. Because if you're not, there's someone else that has that mentality. That's trying to take your job. There's 60 dudes every single year that are coming to take my job. And you have to look at it as like, this is my spot. And I'm sorry. Like, it's brutally honest, but you're not taking mine. So find another one. No, and that's a that's such a clutch situation because in order to be successful, you, you have to you have to in some way see what it looks like. You know, I had right. 
I had Justin Simmons, the all pro safety for the Broncos. I had him on here and he said his rookie year, he had, you know, a key to leave over here. He had Chris Harris over here. He had TJ Ward over here. He had Darian Stewart over here. He had all these vets on his team that showed him what to do. Same thing. When I got drafted by the Packers, I had, I got to watch Charles Woodson, you know, I got injured and I watched him. I'm like, damn dude, how the hell is this dude? Like he's a highest paid player. He's getting, he's making a pro bowl. And I found out that he comes back to the facility at night and he's watching tape all night. And I'm like, that when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's what helped me go from on the edge of being like cut and not playing again to playing 12 years. So that's crazy that you saw that, which I'm sure was a blessing. Like you said, that makes sense why going to the G League was a big deal. Yeah, no, because it's a humble experience. And as you know, like there's more to it every year. Like I bet you year right. one, the stuff that you gained going to like year four or five, there's like different things that you learned where it's like, all right, you figured out the playing part. Now, how do I figure out like how to take care of my body so that I'm available all the time so that I'm right. mentally not worn out so I could be at my best? Like every year is like a growth period where the problem is, is that people only see like for you guys, like Sunday, Thursday, Monday, they just see you in your uniform. They don't understand like the preparation sitting in the cold tank. You know what I mean? Like hyperbaric chambers, like watching the hours of film. They don't understand that. And you could never explain it to someone because they, you have to go through it. You have to be in that gauntlet. It's like a certain language that like athletes speak to know like, oh yeah, you, you, you were really grinding for like, you really earned this. Like there's right. guys you're like, dang, you played 10 plus years in professional sports. You're like, nah, like respect because you know how much time and effort and <laughs> How much wear and tear on your body that is. I tell people, I said, Monday through Saturdays suck. Sunday's the fun day. (laughs) Game day is the fun day. Because you just just go play, you know. It it reminds me of watching uh, boxers. It's like, after the fight, why do they hug? After, like, blasting each other in the face for, you know, 36 minutes. Why do they hug? It's because they're like, bro, I know what you went through to like get to this situation. I right. know the hard training camp, the weight cutting, you know, that's what it was like. So that's, I think that is a, a huge situation. Cause for me, man, I didn't, I say, okay, when you get the professional sports, right, everyone is a mutant in their own right. Right. They have some kind of superpower that got them there, but I learned, I'm like, okay, one, if you're not available health wise, then you're not doing anybody's service. And two, it's all about it's IQ. Once I learned how to take care of my body and I got to understand the game versus me trying to be just the better athlete, but I got to see that watching people, that's where it changed. Do you are you do you feel like where you are now cuz I see right now you have such a, a a huge role like with the team now. Do you feel like you're in that zone where like you figured out like the system, you know? Yeah, I mean basically you don't want to say this line to young guys, but it's it's not like work harder, it's it's work smarter. And and I mean that from like a physical aspect. Like everybody at this level is talented. Like there is things that you should work on for hours or 45 minutes. Like I, I say like at least 45 minutes a day, whether if it's, you know, uh, assisted recovery, you know what I mean? Or like actually getting after it. But you really have to put time in because you don't want to be working three hours a day. This season is long, like 17 games in the NFL, 82 games uh, in the NBA, 162 games in right. MLB. Like, like you, you're, this isn't college where you just have a small window. Like there are huge windows. So you have to make sure like the best ability is availability. Like you have to be able to give up yourself and get the proper rest, nutrition to be able to play. But I was never the best athlete. So to answer your question, like I was never trying to be a better athlete than everybody else. I was always looking for that mental edge over someone or just watching more film and seeing like, all right, this guy likes to drive the ball left, but then spin back right. Or this guy, I see him, you know, and when I'm watching film, like he gets in an argument with his teammate or someone's talking shit to him on the other team and he all of a sudden just goes rogue and stops playing team basketball. Then I'm like, <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? I'm going right, to say to his yeah. teammate, like, Look, like, look at him looking you off, like, and have them, like, start button heads again. You know what I mean? It's like, people are like, why are you talking shit? Like, you're not even <laughs> that good. I'm like, right there. I was like, I was like, I'm not talking shit for me. I'm talking shit to throw you off your game. I know I'm not that good, but if I can get you to be bad, I know I'm better than you. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I. That's fun. The picture that you're telling that you tell them like he's not giving you the ball, like he's not passing you the ball. Oh yeah, and the best part is they'll be like, "I know, man. They just got me over here sitting in the corner, like." And I'm like, and I'm like, "Got him, got him, like, got your got ass." Him. Yeah. All right. So, so you, all right. So you mentioned. Let's talk some more b-ball. You mentioned, uh, you know, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. Right now, they're both. Uh, they have their teams at the top of the conference. Katie's averaging twenty nine. Steph averaging twenty seven. Yeah. Steph, uh, lighting it up. And they're, they're the two favorites. Like, what is it? about them in terms of just what makes them dangerous in their own right, you know, for them to put their teams in this position. Cause you've seen it firsthand. Uh, so it's like, it's like two different monsters, right? Steph is no matter if he's playing with five G league guys, five all-stars, he just never stops moving. And someone that never stops moving, like, do you know how hard that is to guard, especially someone that can score four feet over half court. So it's like rather than guarding someone in like a 25 foot by like 23 foot, like radius, you have to guard them in like what's a half court, 50 feet to. Yeah. Once he passed half court games on. Yeah. That's what I mean. So, and then he's like <laughs> running off screens and backdoor cutting. And then like, you're like, Oh, he only shoots threes. Like he's not going to make a layup. Then he makes like four layups and you're like, damn. And now you're like, all right, I'm not going to give up a layup. Then he like, shoots it while you're this close in his face. And it, it's just so tough to guard someone that's constantly moving. And then you have Kevin Durant, who is legit seven foot and moves like a a guard, um, is like sleeky, slender, can can move around guys, but also can be strong enough to get to the rim and dunk on right. you, but also can take you outside. And I would say like has as smooth of a stroke as Steph Curry, except he's not – doesn't need that much space and he's just shooting over the top of you like yeah that was great defense but that was better offense i feel like that might be like kevin durant's nickname like hey that was great d but that's gonna be better <laughs> better, offense. <laughs> better offense that's yeah. dope so so nick uh you had <clears throat> a nice take on the words on how uh curry being injured a few years ago like made this happen so talk about this yeah george is, is talking about how he moves around and with five G leaguers out there too. He's still such a force. Well, and I feel like when he broke his hand that year and then you saw Jordan Poole, Toscano Anderson, even Wiggins, when he got there, got more playing time. And then Damon Lee, like these guys who were your role players started playing these big minutes, getting acclimated with the system, being comfortable. Now you're seeing the Warriors and they're top in the West. Will, we were talking about how I felt like they were the biggest X factor coming into this year because we just didn't know what was going to happen when Clay comes back. Now you're looking at them. They're the top seed in the West, and you have that thing dangling in the side of your ear like <laughs> Clay Thompson might be coming back. Just be careful. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, just thinking about it, uh, it, it goes back to like Will was saying like about – being smart and knowing the game. It's like those guys don't ever get out of their box, right? Like Toscano Anderson isn't trying to come in and shoot step back threes. They they play off the attention being for Steph. And all right, let me get Steph open. So my guy overreacts and tries to help and Steph's smart enough to pass it to them. And next thing you know, you, you look at the box score and those guys have like 12 points each and Steph had like a cool 25 on like 12 a shots. A cool 25, right. Yeah, like it was effortless, but it's because the ball's always moving. Like when you can play in synergy and, and like Will, you can attest to this with, you know, like football defensively and offensively. Like everybody needs to be on a string to yeah. for and everything. Just, and just, you just, you don't have to, oh, look, you just know where someone's going to be. You just know that. Yeah, yeah. It's more like you, you guys know it and like you're on the same page and it's like music to the eyes watching like the Warriors. Like, Someone moves here, and then it's a reaction. When I see him moving here, I'm moving here, and it's pulling the defense in different directions. And next thing you know, they're scoring, and the defense is looking at each other like, what the f***? Like, we, you were supposed to be here. And it's like they're <laughs> they're toying with it. But to go back to what Nick was saying, now you add a uh, top five shooter of all time to that. Like, oh, shit. I I'm happy that we played them twice already but a, but a seasoned guy in the system too he's not just somebody coming out of nowhere he's someone who is the system yeah no he created the system like he st <laughs> he, he started at the started from the bottom now we're here you know what i mean Yo. i just took i just took three years off now i'm ready like so so uh it, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be exciting to see because those 
I think in the NBA, you play with unselfish people. The ball's hopping. Everybody's happy. It's like the ball has energy. Once everybody's touching it, it's moving around. Nobody cares who scores. Everybody's happy. It it just makes for, you know, great things to happen. And they've done a great job of, of doing that over there. And it's great to see. Obviously, you hate playing against them. And, um, right. But you but you respect the the art of, of of what they do, which which reminds me of um th- the next player I want to talk about is is LeBron because that's kind of that's his style. We were talking before you came on. I'm like everyone always compares, right? LeBron, Jordan, Kobe, whatever. Jo- Kobe and Jordan they were they were just like scorers. Like if all else fails, they're like everybody get out the way. Like I got it. Where LeBron is a system, and the reason why it came up because everyone's talking about you know the chemistry struggle, you know, Russell, you know, trying to learn like the LeBron way, like from your perspective, like what is it like playing against LeBron? I feel like once he comes on the court, like everything is active. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't like, what is, what is it like playing against him in terms of like the LeBron system that I call it? Um, you know, I I think, it, it, it's a reality, right? I mean, you were on LeBron James's team the last 10 years. Eight out of the 10 years, you're going to the finals, right? I mean, or is it not? Not Like, he's finding ways. Like, it may look ugly early on. <laughs> it may look ugly at the end. But at the end of the day, like, push comes to shove, he's finding a way to get that team to the he's finals, <laughs> right? Yeah. So whether he, he's he's such a great athlete, and he's been in the game so long that he understands the position that he needs to put certain guys in. And the Lakers are going through a tough time right now. Like they're struggling. They're not sure, you know, and I think LeBron has, has done a solid job his career and he gets pretty hardly criticized for it, but making trades or being a part of what he thinks he needs. And I, I think he knows what he needs. I think he knows he, what he needs. He's gone to the finals. like <laughs> Yeah. And, and he does a great job of that. And, once he gets what he needs, it's like it's scary. You know what I mean? Because they have um, they have a, a a ton of weapons. You know that when used at the right time or the right place, you know that they can be a really good team. But it's going to take time. I mean, they literally had four guys that were returning from last year's team. Like Rome wasn't built in one day. So I'm not going to be one of those people that's sitting here like. The Lakers are done. You know, they're going to make moves. They're going to figure some things out. But the LeBron factor is, one, he's just so fast. He's so physically dominant. And he's so smart. Like, he understands, like I said, where to put guys and where to be that you can never count a guy out like that because as soon as you start counting him out and like, oh, he's falling off, he's not the same. And then it's like he averaged 40 and 15 and seven assists in the month of February. And you're like, oh, no, he's out. He's, he's, He's washed right. up now, huh? And he's good, at, and he's good at all five positions. That's what's that's what's pretty cool. Like watching yeah. him, like he'll just he'll yeah. go and be like, you know what? This these next five minutes, I'm gonna play the four because I got a mismatch. Or it's it's pretty cool to watch, man, to see him uh, do all that. So, man, George, I want to thank you so much, man, for for jumping on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time. Now you're feeling better. You're back playing ball you took time after practice man i i really really appreciate it this is super cool uh definitely want to get you back on here because you're super fun and you're a new englander man i got i got a rep for the home team you know what i'm saying we gotta so stick together I appreciate man. You, bro we gotta stick together because no one no one comes to the northeast man they they, they don't respect <laughs> us unless they're like you said unless they're watching the the red sox celtics bruins page that's why i dealt with when i was in college all listen oh. red sox won bruins won celtics won Patriots won. They all won. And we were like ranked fifteenth in the country, but no one gave a damn, to your point. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. They're like the ego the Eagles, the the birds is, is what what's their name again? <laughs> no, I appreciate I'm you, kidding. my man. No. All right, appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on. Let's get into some football and let's jump into our upset breakdown. This is the segment where we break down the biggest upsets of the last week. And trust me, there were some crazy ones. But before we start, Lamb, you want to mention something about the favorites this week? Yeah, well, this is uh, this is something that professional sports bettors like to do. They sort of gravitate to blindly almost by default to double-digit favorites. Uh, 
they like to bet the underdog in this scenario because a lot of times it's 10 or more points. It's two possessions, professional right. teams, something that they go to. However, double digit favorites heading into week 16 were 19, 15, and two against the spread. And all three double digit favorites this weekend, outside of one which we'll get to in a little bit, won, and they won rather comfortably. So the double digit favorite has been just smashing the sports books this year. Ha. Huh. That's interesting. That's super interesting. All right. Well, let's get into our first upset, which is which is a weird upset. The Titans on Thursday night football. They beat the Niners 20 to 17 um, at plus 155. Now, this is one of those games again where it's kind of like like Tennessee is despite what they're dealing with, they're a good team. They won 10 games this year, you know, so that's it was interesting to have them now. Sure. Traveling, you know, um, that, that I don't know. That was interesting. But uh, it was really cool for Tennessee to get back. A.J. Brown, I never forgot how much of a beast he was. He went off. I mean, but he has so much single coverage, which was crazy to me. Like, I did not understand that. But 11 catches, 145 and a TD coming back. Um I mean, Tannehill was just throwing him the football. I mean, right? I mean, that's yeah. When you, but that's what that's what I understand, man. It's like when you have a guy like that, and especially once once AJ Brown is in that category I mentioned before. Like, just keep feeding him the football, and he'll just get better and better and better and better. He's like that in the same game. Debo's like that. Um, like when you have an X factor, you have to feed them the football. You cannot try to conform them to the system like you create things for them and this this whole narrative came up because obviously you know that was the issue with Odell in Cleveland Odell mm-hmm. scored again by the way this week yep because McVay drew up a play for him to score a touchdown mm-hmm. so um that's interesting and then, you know Debo is continuing to prove like he is definitely one of the top dogs not just fo- receivers but just football players in this entire league um but yeah man it was I mean, this was an interesting game because I could see either one winning, but Tennessee is that type of team where, man, they just have such a great infrastructure that apparently they have so much depth. And I just feel like everyone is well coached because losing, not having their best players, you know, they were still competing and winning games and then getting one of their best players back. They just went out there and got it done. So what are some uh, gambling takeaways from this game? Yeah, I, I love what you're talking about with the Titans because they're a team, well, that I kind of have penciled down as like, uh, let's keep an eye on those odds, see if we get anything spicy right. with them getting Derrick Henry back. They got A.J. Brown. You're talking about the single coverage. I think having Julio Jones out there, too. I know Julio isn't, he right. hasn't shown what he was doing in Atlanta, but still just the idea of having to worry about that guy, too. The right. line it's, still, opened up, it's still Julio. He's, I mean, right. he's, not, still, he's not playing like Julio, but he still has the same yeah. name. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got to just be careful with that guy. So the line opens up at minus three San Francisco, and then A.J. Brown comes back. And adding more to what you're saying about him, I feel like he means a lot to this offense, especially with the injuries. I found a lot of value in this Titans line. I was on the Titans in this scenario because I felt like them having A.J. Brown back was going to elevate the whole offense. And that's what we saw. 65% of the money was coming in on the Niners against the spread. And the Titans continued to win games and they covered the spread. Well, nine and six against the spread this year are the Tennessee Titans. Huh? Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's wild, but. I want to I want to I want to I wanna step in real quick, man, to ask you about the Niners, because is there a team in the NFL that like what do we make of the Niners? Because to me, as I'm watching them the last couple of weeks, I'm saying to myself, that's a team that I don't know if I would want to play in the playoffs. But then they're also a team that might not make the playoffs. Like, what do we make of the Niners? The Niners, they're somebody I would want to play in the playoffs simply because, well, one, they have a lot of guys banked up, especially at the running back position. And Jimmy G is unpredictable. Tennessee is a team I don't want to play in the playoffs. They still might get Derrick Henry back. Like yep. that, that, that's the war in the street right now. They might get him back for the playoffs. But I don't think anyone 
in their right mind should be afraid of of the 49ers. Now, despite saying all that, having all these injuries and whatever quarterback uncertainties, they're eight and seven. You know, they're they're eight and seven. So there's they are competitive. They are doing some things, but I don't know if they I don't know. If they now if let's say they get in and they have to play the Rams, I think that is proceed with caution because it's a common opponent. I think mm-hmm. when it comes to that, or if they play Arizona, you know, something like that. I think right. that is something where you proceed with caution if it's within their own uh, division. But for the most part, in terms of being the threat to go ahead and win it all, I think certain things have to happen for them in the right way. Like maybe they play one of the NFC West teams early and then end up meeting the other NFC West team in the conference championship game. Now it's like, oh, shoot, I can see something like that. But in terms of like them being dangerous, I don't. I think anybody would play them anywhere because Jimmy G, you just don't know. Yeah. You just don't know. All right. Our next upset, upset number two, the Bears, they go into Seattle and they beat them 25-24 as a plus 250 dog in this situation. They go into – times have changed. Before, teams will go into Seattle and it will be a problem. The link. Now it's Lumen Field. Lumen does not sound dangerous at all. Like, we're going to go to Lumen, guys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're going the- shopping. I know. <laughs> Luden, Luden, that's the cough drop, right? Ludens, is that what that is? You remember those? Yeah, I <laughs> think said, I might need to go get me some. Yeah, but if they said it was a cough drop, but that tastes like candy. It was like a Jolly Rancher <laughs> pretty much. That did not heal. Anyway, it did nothing but give me cavities. It didn't heal a damn thing. Um, but yeah, they go in there and they get Chicago weather. It was frosty, yeah. white out there. And your boy Nagy calls on his best friend. His savior, Nick Foles, to come in and get. I'll tell you what, that man is going to play forever simply because he just keeps coming up with these weird clutch moments. Um, You know, throwing the game winner to your boy, Jimmy Graham, former Seahawk, former Saints, former Miami Hurricane. But yeah, so quick uh, analysis for this game Foles was 24 uh, 35 and Basically, just just working the ball down the field, you know, and I, I think that's where IQ comes into play is like he's utilizing his check. Down. He has a lot of he has a lot of receivers or just a lot of offensive weapons that are are known for like being good after the catch. So yeah. he has a lot of punt returners playing receivers. So there really isn't that guy who, who he can really just chuck it deep to, for example, like an Allen Robinson. Like he has a lot of guys that are just like small gadget guys who are competitive. Um, Montgomery coming back was was a big for them, and he's been showing that week in and week out. But, yeah, um, before I get into the – have you do the gambling takeaways, it's crazy that 85% of the money line bets came in on Seattle. Let's talk about that one. Yeah, man. You know, th- this game and the one we're going to get to in just a second, Will, anytime you have big favorites, a lot of times you're at the sports book, you're on your app, and you're just saying, you know what? I'm going to throw this seven point favorite in there, too. They're not, Seattle's not going to lose at home to Nick Foles. You know, like that's when a lot of thinking happens. And then that's when you get burned. The line stays consistent throughout the whole week, minus seven. Nothing changed from when they announced Nick Foles a starter. So, it was just a weird game, Will, and I couldn't understand how the Bears won that game. Well, They're here's, down here's 10 the going into the fourth quarter. Well, how do they lose this game, Seattle? Listen, here's the thing, too. When, like, <clears throat> I'm sure 85% of the money came in because you, you, when you think of Seattle, you think of how dominant you, you think of the Seahawks. You, you hear them. You, they still have Russell. So you're like, okay, they're still that team. And they're at home. Yeah, correct. And Right. And they're at home. The home field advantage, the whole decibel thing, whatever that stuff is. Like all that, the advantage. But they won five games. Yeah. People don't look like you can't just like ignore the fact that they won five games. You see the star players, Russell, Bobby Wagner, Quasha Diggs. Like they won five games. So, but also... Right. And then, you, but you look at the Bears situation and they 
Okay, we're going to start Nick Foles. What does Nick Foles give them? People are like, oh, he's not the starter. He's not a top tier quarterback. He's not a high pay guy. But he gives them stability because he's going to make the right decisions. Andy Dalton is unpredictable. You know, like he's on a journeyman career. And we still don't know. We know a little bit about Fields, but he's still figuring it out. Nick Foles he's, is pretty much the quarterback coach. He's the second coach. It's, it's Nagy, Laser, and Foles <laughs> in terms yeah. of the coaching staff. So he gives them stability. And I will say, too, his receivers made some tough catches, like the two-point conversion to Bird. That was crazy. Like, he just – I thought he had him earlier, and he still – I mean, he had to throw it. It was going for two. You can't throw it away or take a sack. And he ended up making a, a big-time catch in the snow, which is super, super hard. Um, so I can see, like, this This is a game where you're like, you know what, I'm going to take a swing at this because Seattle is – they're not – despite what you think, they're not a good football team. They're five wins. Worst. Uh, since the since Pete John took over, so how did they lose this game? You know, I don't know. I'll tell you what, though, I am happy for. I am very, very happy for uh, Rashad Penny. Um, he has he was their first round pickup like four years ago. Yep, dealt with tons of injuries, and it's kind of like proven. Hey, you know, I can be that guy I was at San Diego State when he was running all over the place. Uh, I actually reached out to him and, and shot him. He's actually a big wine guy, believe it or not. So I, I reached out to him and said, man, this is cool, man, like that. He, he's taking advantage of his opportunities right now and, and proving that he can be a guy. So, again, running for over 100 yards. But, man, what's what's going to happen? This this is going to be a very, very, very interesting offseason. I don't know what's going to happen. Actually, I know John Snyder, he signed a long-term deal, I think, this year or last year, I can't remember. Don't know what's up with Pete. Don't know what's up with Russ. I know you want Russ in New York. Come on. <laughs> I'll pick him up at the airport. We'll just make the call. That's a, that's a decision I think Sierra has to make, and I think she's ready for that <laughs> to go to New York. But apparently, you know, we're not going to talk about the Giants so much, but your boys are coming back. Joe and Daniel, <laughs> that's the word in the street. But yeah, man, I don't know, man. This is so interesting. It's just, man, ever since, ever since that Super Bowl, it's just been weird. It's just been super weird in Seattle. And add this, add this to the long list of Seattle doesn't play normal games because this was not a normal game, whether it was the weather or it coming down to them blowing a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter. They just always play wacky games, Will. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, <clears throat> I don't understand. I don't understand. It could be like, that game could be like the uh, the curse of the Bambino situation. Like, here's what's crazy. How long was, how long would, was DK Metcalf's touchdown? It was about, uh, I think it was like a 38 yarder, if I'm not mistaken. 38 go I want you to check I want you to tell me how long 41 DK. yards 41 yards yeah how many yards did DK finish with I think he had one other catch because I in fantasy look purposes. how many yards DK finished with oh 41 <laughs> somebody gets another pass for nothing bro yeah, yeah. that's what I'm yeah, saying you can't have that but it's been like that all year it's been like that, like, there's, I don't know, there's nothing they can say, like, okay, is he not running the right routes? Is he not open? Like, it's wild to me. He has 800 yards receiving this year, 846. He only has one 100-yard game, and that was for a buck seven. Yeah. He had 1,300 yards last year. 1,300. Yeah, it's like, it's rough because there's always you always see that year three breakout for the wide receiver too. And I right? understand. Like I it. understand Russ was injured. I get that. I get that. But still, but even with it, Russ, even yeah, even with Russ, I'm saying people are like, oh, it got weird. It, it doesn't matter because you look at someone like like DeAndre Hawkins. It didn't matter who was throwing the football. Yeah. He got it done. Didn't matter. But 
Yeah, man, it's it's going to be super interesting what's going to happen uh, this offseason with Seattle. Lots of questions. All right, this show is brought to you by WinBet. The NFL playoffs are just around the corner. So what are you waiting for? Download the WinBet app and start winning today. New users can take advantage of WinBet's bet $1 win $100 offer. If you bet just $1, you could win a free $100 bet on almost any sport, NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, college football, UFC, boxing, and more. And they're also offering a 200% wager matchup up to $1,500. Lots of things going on towards the end of the new year. Nick, what are you liking on the app this week? Well, we got some big, big college football games on Friday. We got the final four going. Cincinnati getting 13 and a half points against Alabama. Georgia is, spicy. is minus seven and a half against Michigan. One thing I want to mention, Will, when you're looking at college sports, a lot of money comes in from alumni and the public on big name schools blindly almost because people don't bet against their alma mater like they never bet against if you if you went to Michigan and you graduated from there you're not going to bet against Michigan so just be careful when you're looking at some of these betting trends and where money's coming in where money's coming out from well we got two teams in Cincinnati and Michigan that had odds of 100 to 1 or higher coming into this season <laughs> so if you had a ticket and you thought that they might win a national championship man I wish I could have your ticket right now but what so, I'm looking at, Will, it's is the Leicester City situation here. Yeah, <laughs> just about Alabama, though, 13 and a half points. I think this is a big test for Cincinnati. Extra time for Nick Saban to prepare. I know they lost one of their wide receivers to a torn ACL. Um, Minchie, I think his name mm-hmm. is. Uh, but still, I just think Alabama, Bryce Young, the way he played all year. I think it might be too much for Cincinnati. Oh, man. I don't it's it's hard because they're such a well-coached team and they got two of the top DBs in the country on their team it's gonna be a test for those guys it's you I swear it, you're really gonna see if these these corners are first round picks mm. they probably already are because they they proved it during the year but they talk about they're gonna get tested this whole team but they're so well coached I I almost I almost want to like go for it and just go for the dog in this situation. I, I saw the way do. your head was nodding when, when I was reading some of these lines. I was like, no, oh, because it, be it just it just feels right, man. But but as you saw, what Bama did to Georgia is like he knows how to turn it on when it's go time. When it's go time, he knows how to turn it on. So for all the details on the offers we mentioned earlier, download WinBet now and set the odds in your favor. Offer subject to change term and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. All right, it is time for Win Will Black Wins Money. It's, I need to say that like a, like, a, like a show. All right. No, I don't edit this. This is organic. All right, it's time for Win. Will Blackman's money. Yes, third person again. First, let's welcome back to the show my guy, my 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 gambling guru in training, <laughs> Theo Ash from the Stay Hot Podcast. Uh, welcome back to the show. What's good? How's it going? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm coming off the uh, the Christmas high coming down. It's always a weird kind of purgatory in between Christmas and New Year's where I just don't know what the vibe is, but uh, I'm there right now. But I, I had a good time these past couple of days and uh, now I'm just relaxing a little bit before things get kind of kicked up again. Very good. So um, we are very lucky in our household for that, that weird window because we have Christmas and then today is our son's birthday. Oh, Wednesday is our daughter's birthday. Wow. And then we have New Year. So we got a festive week. We don't have that weird in-between gap. So anyhow, so let's just recap uh, everyone again. Those who are just tuning in during the show, Theo is new to the gambling scene. Lamb and I are trying to help him out. So every week at the end, until the end of the football season, we are giving him 100 bucks. Actually, I am giving him 100 bucks because this win will black his money, but... Nick is there with me too. We're giving him to bet with on the WinBet app. He has to use all 
hundred dollars. He has to make two, at least two wages, right? One's a parlay of at least three legs and a bet that includes a non football sport. So Theo, let's talk about some of your bets. First, let's talk about this two leg parlay. You did, uh, you've been having some luck betting on over and unders this week. So talk about what you done here. Well, this were these were two sloppy slop fest games with Tim Boyle starting for the Lions, playing the Falcons, and then Jets and Jaguars, which are two of the very, very worst teams the great league has to offer. So I was like, why not bet the unders in these games? You did look under the couch for this game. You definitely you're right, yeah, was searching for I swear I went through that whole cushions. Sunday. I went through that whole Sunday. I didn't hear a single thing about Lions Falcons. Not one tweet about it. Not one game break to show a highlight. Like I didn't hear and this game. Amon not Ra have, had a. They had Amon Ra's touchdown. That was it. I Kyle think. Pitts, I guess, had a big uh, play as well, like a fade route. So I guess I saw one. But I was like, "Is that game happening? Is that in this window?" And I'm like, "Sure enough, it is." I haven't heard one little word about it. And the under did hit there uh, because Tim Boyle is starting, and um, you know that's a backup QB for you right there, and it's the Lions. So I think that one ended what. Like seventeen. Yeah, it was 20, 20 to sixteen for that one. Uh, twenty to sixteen. So the under did hit there, but only yes. just. And then the and you and Jags Jets. Jets. <laughs> Jets. That one was weird, and actually, they did a decent job putting up some points in that game. I know Zach Wilson had like a fifty-two yard touchdown scramble run. for a touchdown where he juked out. Like Man, that wasn't a scramble. That was a run. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That was that was a long <laughs> sprint, and. Like that happened, and you know the, they actually had some life. Uh, Jack Wilson played a pretty good game. Um, Jaguars were also putting up some points, and that one went over. But I was like, I can live with that game going over. I think my process in thinking that should not have gone over was a decent one. But yeah, no, that was interesting because. <clears throat> so my thought on the first one, that one made sense. I didn't think the Falcons and Lions was going to be any type of explosive game at all whatsoever but here's the thing when i look at the um the jags and jets game is that i look at the the type of player zach wilson is like he he has the arm to like go for it he has the mindset where he's gonna go for it you know what i mean and if there was a chance for him to try to be help the offense be explosive like this this would have been the game to do it. Right. But I understand overall looking at both teams, like, okay, if they're both not good, they're both not going to score points. But Jets have shown at times they can be explosive, especially with him at quarterback. Nick, what's your thoughts on this? Man, I just think I just think there's some games you shouldn't bet on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like, you know, you went one and one in this scenario on the under. Uh, I just leave these alone. <clears throat> yeah, there's just some games that you just shouldn't bet. Or, or even look at like what you were saying, Theo. How you saw no no coverage of the Falcons and Lions game. Kind of the same. Like you know, I'm from New York, and there was no buzz about this game. No one was covering it. It was kind of just it, the battle of the first and the second quarterback that got taken. But half the roster is on COVID. There's a coaching change. There's backup coaches now. So I like the thought process, but I would probably just stay away from some of these. All right, all right. That's, <laughs> all right. I mean, it's smart. Obviously, I shouldn't have bet the under here because it didn't hit. But yeah, you know, there's there's always I try to look for maybe some hidden value in some, you know, because these are maybe the games that people overlook, and you know, maybe there's something to exploit there. But you're probably right that it's just more, more so you f you find more value usually in sides than you do in totals. Okay. So like if uh, if like a lot of money was coming in on the Jets, for example. And that'd be something where you could take the contrarian route. But on totals, it's very rare that you could say, oh, everyone's coming in on a on a over. Let me go under. Unless Fair. it's a uh, it's like a Chargers Chiefs game from a couple of weeks ago that people have been circling for months that, oh, that's going to be fireworks. True. Very good. All right. So here's where you stand before the Monday night game. This is where you stand. Uh, total. Blackman Bucks lost four hundred and ten dollars. Total winning bet cost two hundred and thirty five dollars. So your total winnings right now stands at five hundred and thirty dollars. Nick, any last words of advice before we let Theo go? 
Yeah, man. I just think that there's some games it's, it's better to just watch, or in some cases, not watch. <laughs> oh, at don't all. Don't watch at all. If you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna bet in that game. It's, it's a game. If it's a game not worth watching, don't even touch it. Yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. Fair enough. Fair enough. My my advice is like, give okay. This is the last week here for season. Give me some action. Okay. No more of these. No more of these safe safe bets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick two teams. No one's watching. Okay. <laughs> I don't want not, not happening. All right. I won't let you down in that. <laughs> in that category. All right, Theo. Best of luck on your next round of bets. Win some money for the team, for the squad. We'll catch you next time. Peace out. Okay, it is time to name the upset of the week. And we all know who it is. The Texans knock or potentially knock the Chargers out of the playoffs. They beat them 41 to 29 as a plus 525 dog. You could have you could have pretty much went out there and was like, the Chargers are gonna get this done. But they don't. They're in that weird. I said earlier, man, them, the Chargers, and the Vikings. Two weird ass teams, dude. I have no idea what's going on with them. But okay. I <laughs> I have a tweet that I put out um during the draft. And it was a, it was a sp- <laughs> it was a spicy tweet. Um I'll have Noah pull it up. And I said, Davis, I said when the dust settles, Davis Mills will be the best QB from this class. <laughs> I said when the dust settle. So far this year, he is the second best rookie quarterback. So far this year, he is. Um, is he QB one? Is he the future? Who knows? I mean, he's he puts them in a great situation to do some things this offseason because he's he's on his rookie contract, obviously. Um, he went 21, 27, two TDs. Um Rex Burke had just, <laughs> he just he just hurt everyone. He went off. He I don't know what went into him, but he went off. 140 yards, over 140 yards, two TDs. <clears throat> but man, but I like to say I do like to say this though. My new favorite term. This was a sandwich game, people. <laughs> this was. A sandwich game. This was this game was placed in between two division games for them. Okay. Chiefs last week they lost. Denver next week. Two games they really needed. The sandwich game, people. Here it is. <laughs> so Tremendous. Nick talk to us about this game. I mean, you, you know, the smile on my face Will, when you <laughs> dropped the sandwich bar reference was oh absolutely God. ridiculous. I love it. Oh, uh, this was the, the ice cream wrestling bar. Did you like those, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I remember those. Come on. We need to bring those back. You know, we got to talk to Vince <laughs> about that. 92% of the bets, Will, were coming in on the money line for the Chargers. What we said right, before so. about the Seahawks, right? Ah, you know what, Will? Us two, we walk up to the sports book. You know, you like, yo, Lamb, I got these three games I like right now. And I nudge you and I go, yo, let's throw Seattle and the Chargers in there. Get a little bit more juicy. Bang, blows up in our face. 80-20 rule, Will. Have you ever heard of the 80-20 rule when it comes to road favorites? Oh, no, I heard it for dieting, but not road favorites. So the 80-20 <laughs> rule, anytime you have 80% of the bets from the public coming in on a road favorite, just be careful. Right, pursue with caution, and that's what you had here. <laughs> Close to eighty-eight percent of the bets were coming in on the Chargers, coming off an extra couple days to prepare. Remember, they played last Thursday in that banger of a football game against the Chiefs. So, this one, this one's a little deflating, well, for me because I've been on the Chargers bandwagon all year. Justin Herbert was my MVP pick, and I need them to make the playoffs, will. <laughs> to cash a nice ticket that I have, but what is happening with the Chargers? They they need to stop the run. They ran, they ran they ran the ball down the throws with Rex Burkhead too, who just went and got it done. Um, I don't know. I I know they didn't have Eckler, but Eckler doesn't play defense. And your boy Herbert threw a pick six. Yeah. So it's a I don't know. It's a it's a weird situation. It's so see here's the thing. 
especially with like football experts or analysis, it's hard to say what's going on with an organization when when you're not there. Mm. Sometimes I tell people, you know, I see people on TV and say, this is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. Like, so I'm going to be real. Sometimes I'm going to say, I don't know because I don't know. <laughs> I'm not there. So I can make an assumption like, okay, they can't stop the run. Sure. But, you know, they did, they gave up tons of yards before in, in, in one game, for example, against the Browns. Um, sure, guys are injured, but I don't know what messages are being said. I don't know the day to day. I don't know if what chemistry is like amongst the organization. All those things matter to see what's going on. You, we, we know, sure, there's some confusion and issues going on in Washington and you saw it, you know, two guys, former teammates, current teammates get pretty much get into a fight in the sideline. We saw things like that. You see organizations like Jacksonville going through stuff. You know stuff ain't right there just based off how they are. So but you also see good energy, for example, like the Colts. Mm. You you can tell why despite the adversity they dealt with and went through that they keep competing, get it done. You see things. So I don't, other than that, right. Cause we don't have a hard knocks on every single team. We don't know. We can't tell you. So I don't know what's going on with these chargers, but they better well, get it together. I like what you said about not being in the locker room, because that was something that jumped out to the, to me, the conversation we had with RG three, when we were talking about the Ravens going for two and how he said prior to going to Baltimore, I didn't, I didn't like that call. But being in the locker room and experiencing them saying, oh, no, we're, we're going for two. This is what we work on. This is what we want our identity to be. That's, that's, that's a hell of a point that you bring up about the locker room. Exactly. Because everyone's like, what? That's a terrible decision. But if that's the message, is that's who we are? Even for him to ask the players like, hey, man, what do you we talked about this? We, we want to own this decision. So we're going to go for it, man. So that's that's what I do. That's my point exactly why I'm not in the locker room. So I don't know what these people are thinking. It's like when, like when I get up and speak about coaches, Joe Barry, sure, he was on the 0 16 Lions, but when he got hired, I was like, look, man, he's gonna he's gonna bring so much energy, and he's actually gonna have better, like good, really good players all over the place for for the first time in a while, where he gets to just sit there and coach these dudes and be in a good a good situation and have a quarterback a offense that's gonna give you twenty thirty points where you can coach and and when he had his interview he he owned up to it. he's like look i'm i'm a product of my scars man they they are they made me who i am and now look they're a top 5 defense because of the his energy is what i got to witness i got to understand so i can talk about him and defend him in a sense same thing everyone's saying like you know what's up with dallas mark mccarthy what's he doing i'm like dude one of the biggest hires was getting dan quinn mhm dan quinn is probably he is definitely one of the most genuine coaches in the entire league. Why? Because I've been in the locker room. I know how he is. I know how genuine he is, how he truly cares about people. He's not about all the political stuff. He he reaches out to every single individual player, starter, backup, doesn't matter, and he coaches. He's on the field coaching. He's wearing cleats in practice because he's coaching. He's excited, energetic, and you see that every time. That's why he shoot. He might get snatched again next year and go be a head coach again. So I can speak about those things because I've been there. It's hard for me to talk about what's going on in the organization. I can put together because I've seen both ends of the spectrum. I've seen you know the top of the top, and I've seen the lowest of the low. I've seen both, but I also seen two different Charger teams this year, which is why it makes it confusing for Charger fans. All right, so that's it for today's show, but we'll be back next week to recap week 17. We will see you in 2022, which is going to be super exciting. Um, once again, this is Upsets and Underdogs presented by WinBet. Do not forget to subscribe. Throw us a rating and review and tell your friends. By the way, my ultimate New Year's pairing, champagne and fried chicken. That is ultimate. Now get get actual champagne, not Prosecco, not Cava, not Cremant. Now get champagne. It has to be it says champagne on the bottle from Champagne France. Fried chicken. That is a pairing. You can find me on all socials at Will Blackman. Where can they find you, Nick? Nick Day is 10 on Twitter and on Instagram. 
All right. Catch you next time. Peace out.